Hi, and welcome back. Today, we're talking about lead conversion. For the last several episodes, we've been talking about how to generate leads, whether it's through for sale by owners or open houses or agent to agent referrals or business to business or within our database. And you've done a great job creating the leads. Now we're going to talk about how to convert them, how to pre-qualify them, how to use the disk profile and other behavioral traits so we can connect with them, build some rapport, add some value, build the trust. Thanks for being here. Stay tuned. Welcome back. My name is Rick Bosley, the owner operator of 3L Coaching and the Bosley Team Real Estate Solutions. I want to talk to you today about lead conversion. We're going to talk about how do we exactly convert a lead. We, we've put all of our energy and efforts into creating the leads, and, and oftentimes it doesn't happen fast. It does require some nurturing. So, how to get to know the leads, how we can coach that appointment, and some commonly asked questions. Let's dive right into it. When we think about what is a lead, we've got to define a lead and, and we kind of say right off the bat, you have an inquiry and you have everybody. And a lead is someone who's ready, willing, and able to do business right now. Now, some CRMs will qualify anybody a lead. Some, some conglomerates or third parties will sell you leads. And we're going to give you 10 leads a week or a month. And is it really a lead? Because a lead is really ready, willing, and able. We actually have a nice little acronym we think about. It's MAN. Are they motivated, ability, and do they have the necessary need? So motivated, ability, and need. Uh, that's, that's what we're looking for. So we've got to identify who are leads and, and we've got this, this funnel, this reverse funnel, because a lead is going to be our top priority. We want to get in front of them face to face, build that rapport, build that trust, create the mind share, because don't forget mind share leads to market share. And of course, we're going to do all of this inside of our database, which is full circle. We've been talking about the database, the entire series here, everybody who's not a lead, everybody who doesn't have a, a real estate need now or in the immediate future. Uh, that's everybody else. And, and here's what I know. They will. They will one day and everybody's going to be a lead at some point. It's going to be determined who will you stay in contact with and will they think of you and have you demonstrated enough value when that time comes. So either way, enter them in your database, stay in a relationship with them, help them achieve their goals, whatever their goals are. And let's just make sure that the leads, people who are who have raised their hand, they're the ones getting our attention. They're the ones getting our priority. So we think about what are the conversion points? Well, we, we initially start with an inquiry. And an inquiry might be someone who walks into an open house or who calls you from a sign call or who clicks on your website or your capture or calls you from a, a marketing mail. Whatever that might be, this is an inquiry. Then we have to determine, are they a lead or not? And with the lead, we've got some pre-qualifying questions. Once we understand if they're a lead or not, our goal is to close for the appointment. Yes, I said close for the appointment. One of the biggest mistakes I see realtors make is they, they create an appointment to make an appointment. You ever heard of that before? You know, you, you're having a great conversation with somebody and says, wow, it's so nice to meet you, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Um, tell you what, I will call you on Monday and we'll set some time up to meet this week. Don't, don't set an appointment to make an appointment. Just, just set up the time. Just set up the time. Reminds me when I invite friends over, we're having to get together and I'd, I'd see someone at Publix or wherever and say, hey, by the way, this Sunday, we're having people over to watch the football game. And they say, oh, great. Let me know. No, no. This is me letting you know. I'm not going to call you again when I get home and then formally invite you. This is the time to book the appointment. So take your inquiry. Determine if they're a lead. If they're a lead, close the appointment. Now, the objective of getting the appointment is to have them sign a buyer's agency or a listing agreement to choose to work with you. An appointment is a job interview. After we have the job interview, then they want to hire us. We want to work with them. We get the agreements. The agreement turns into under contract. Now you've got some escrow in. You, you help the buyers and sellers. And then from the contract gets to closing. Those are the conversion points. And each one of those, the funnel gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So today we're just going, how do we move you from inquiry to lead to an appointment? And one of the ways we can do it is we have to connect. If you've been coaching with me, especially in my live classes, You've seen my stair step to a relationship. And if, if you haven't, this is something you could write down right now or just visually think about it. It's not too complicated. And if I don't know you right now, you're a complete stranger. I could see you on the news tonight and it wouldn't grab my attention because I don't know you. And, and we always see that from happening, right? But all of a sudden, if I know you, there's a connection. If I, if I see you're on the news, I'm like, holy smokes, I know that person. They're on the news. Turn it up. What's going on? Because we have that connection. So the very first I don't know you is, is how many of our inquiries start. And they don't know me. They don't care about me. They don't, they don't 
They just don't, all right? It's okay. The initial goal is to build some rapport. That's it. If, because frankly, if I don't like you or if you don't like me, then it doesn't matter how smart or how good we are, we're probably not gonna work together. So let's build some rapport. So on the call right off the bat, let's build some rapport. Best way to build some rapport, talk about them. Ask them about their goals, right? Talk about something that helps them to talk more. Treat people the way they want to be treated. And a good way to do that is understanding their DISC profile. Now, DISC is one of the many ways we can measure and look at someone's behavioral profile, but DISC is D-I-S-C, and people will lead with one of the four traits. Sometimes they'll have two dominant traits, sometimes one, sometimes three, rarely four, and they kind of connect. So I'm going to go through the DISC profile really quickly with you so you can help identify who are you, who are they, and it doesn't matter who you are at this point because you treat them the way they want to be treated. So the high Ds, D is for dominant, you're a driver. You want it fast, you're task-driven, you're goal-oriented, give me the cliff notes, don't give me the details, don't waste my time. The Ds say don't waste my time, get to the point, I've got something to do. And if they're a high D, they don't want the small talk, they want the bottom line. Next is going to be a high I. And a high I isn't task-driven, but they are people-driven. Equally as fast, but people-driven is the main focus. These are the cheerleaders. These are the warms and fuzzies. You can look at a D. If you look at in the household, if they go to the Grand Canyon or if they go to different uh, sightseeing, the high Ds have quick pictures of the sights, and the high I's are like everyone getting a group picture with funny, goofy poses. That's what the high I's are going to do. So the influentials, the people, the life of the party who are going to rally the troops. Then those are the fasts, right? D and I are fast. D is task. I is people. Then you have S. S and C are more methodical. I don't want to say slow, more methodical, more thoughtful, right? And what they do. And S is slow and steady wins the race. They are very people interested. They are slow and methodical. They choose their friends wisely. They don't want a big shabam party bus for their 40th birthday. They want like three or four of their closest friends to have a nice time out to dinner. That's what the S's want because relationships still matter. They just don't want to be that center of attention still. They care more about that process and that it's done thoroughly and consistently. Stability is very important for them. So don't push them too fast. They won't like it and they'll get a little bit squeamish, right? And then the C, the C is also task oriented yet thoroughly slow. So the high D is going to be, give me the bottom line, give me it fast and close is good enough. The high C is your CPAs and your people who have high attention to detail. When we submit or, or put offers or contracts in people, I would say you have readers and you have signers. And the high C's, they're going to be your readers. They're going to read each page and they don't care how long it takes. They're going to take it home. They're going to want to think about it. So when you have somebody in front of you and they say, great, thank you for this paperwork, the high D is going to go, where are we at? Where are we at? What's my net price? Okay, mm -mm, yep, everything looks good. Let's rock and roll. When can we start? When can we go live? That's your high D. Your high I is going to be, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. Are we going to have open houses, brokers opens? Can we tell my friends? Where's my marketing? Where's my Facebook pages? I want to tell everyone this will be great, right? And your high S's are going to be, I want to think about it. I've got a lot to just process. I need to, I need to take this information and see how it sits. I don't want to do anything too hasty or too fast because what if I make a decision that makes me feel super uncomfortable? And the high C's are going to go fantastic. Uh, I will read this. I will submit it to my attorney. I'm going to talk with about 14 different people. They're going to thoroughly do this. I've got to do my research and then I'll get back to you. So they're going to need time to process. And if you, if you push the S and C to sign here, press hard, you might turn them off. Long story short, that is your DISC profile. We have to understand how to communicate with each of them so that we can help convert them, not against their, their will. We believe it's best for them, but they need to process and come to the terms in their own way. So build some rapport, understand who they are, connect with them at that level. Once you have rapport with them, the next level of that relationship is adding value. Now, how do you add value? Well, if they like you, hopefully they start asking you questions. You ask them questions. When they ask back, you're giving good answers, and, and that's adding value. You're asking them questions they haven't thought about before. Maybe you bring up 1031 exchanges. Maybe you bring up tax portability. Maybe you bring up some different aspects of staging and going, wow, I never thought about that. Thank you for bringing that up. They're going, this guy's pretty smart. He's added value, right? And so as you do value over time, that creates that mind share, that, that creates that confidence that they have in you as their realtor. After you provide enough value over time, it naturally turns into trust. 
And, and trust is kind of like when value works out. So consider this, call my guy, he'll take care of you, great handyman, they'll do all of this, you'll love them. If they do that and that person actually does what you said they would do, trust has been ensued. If they call that person and they completely drop the ball, they're late, they, ch they charge twice as much they're expected and it's incomplete, oh, they lost some faith, lost some trust in you, it's hard to get that back. So we're gonna go for rapport, value, trust, and then we can get that close. It can happen as, as fast as one conversation, especially if their motivation, ability, and need are that urgent, it can happen fast. So it doesn't have to be a long relationship. So, so when we're doing this, we're going to go, how do we get the appointment? And what I'd like to do is review 10 tips for you to get the appointment when you're talking with a qualified lead. Tip number one, ask. Ask for the appointment. I've got taped on my monitor, ask for the order. If you don't ask for what you want, the likelihood of you getting it, it, it falls dramatically. I don't have stats. Ask for what you want. Don't be cryptic. Don't be streak it. Don't assume that they're just going to ask you if they want it. Ask for what you want. It sounds like the next best step is for us to get together so we can blank. Would you be offended if we got together so we could talk about this more formally? Right? These are ways that you can ask for the appointment. Just ask to get together. That's tip number one. Tip number two, be the expert in your market. You proclaim you're the expert in the market, but if you don't have data to back it up, it's hard for you to be the expert in the market. Remember, many of them don't know you. Therefore, to be the expert is adding value, talking about market stats and inventory and interest rates and how we can overcome some high interest rates in this season, in this market. So ask for the appointment, be the expert. Number three, be confident. Competence gives you confidence. Confidence allows you to close more frequently because you're confident that you are the best person for the job. Some of the ways that you build confidence is fake it so you make it. We've heard that before. I'm not saying fake your way into it and, and do a poor job for your buyers and sellers, but you do have to act with some confidence. Even if you're scared, even if you're terrified, going with confident because the more you do it, the more you become confident because the more you become valid in your own right and therefore for everybody else. So ask for the appointment, be the expert, be confident, have a list of questions and we're going to go through some that you can ask them so that you can be thorough with your analysis. It is not a one size fits all market. It's not a one size fits all client. Therefore, have questions so you can truly stay curious. And number five, which is key, and it partly is right to number four, listen. Ask questions and then listen to what they say so you can actually cater your service to their specific needs. Very important there. Number six, always come from contribution. Do stuff that, that you're able to give and give them the best experience and the best, best transaction and the best you know, overall net and everything else. Come from contribution, don't come from greed. Come from an abundance mindset, not from scarcity. Number seven, let's begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind, as we know exactly where we want to go and everything we do is going to help us get us there. Be very clear with them what is the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to get you into Cincinnati before September 1st, netting you the highest amount of money and you want the least amount of hassle. That's the, that's the end in mind. So everything we do is going to talk about when you hire me as your realtor so you can get into Cincinnati, wherever you're moving, by September 1, start with the end in mind. Seek agreement. That goes for kind of after the appointment. As you're doing it, you're checking in. And a great way to use check-ins is with tie-downs. And tie-downs are things like, does that make sense? Do you agree? Do you have any questions? It's taking a statement. And rather than you talking for 20 minutes straight and at the end going, do you have any questions? They might have had 14 questions but forgot 13 of them. Does this make sense? Do you have anything to add to that? Do you agree? Those are great ways to seek agreement and they start doing nodding, nodding, nodding call along the way. So that's number eight. Number nine, respond quickly, speed to lead. If the whole the name of the game of what we do is to turn an inquiry to a lead, to an appointment, to an agreement, to a contract, to a closing, then when you have the opportunity for any of those things, go quickly, right? Speed to lead. It is, a, it is a foot race out there. It's a car race, whatever kind of race you want to put it. So respond quickly to their needs. It doesn't mean you have to be back and call and drop everything, but you should respond and at least set up that appointment to talk about it. And then when possible, communicate in person. Uh, 80 to 90% of communication is nonverbal. Body language, tonality, words are only about 7% of communication. I think it's 93% is tonality and body language. Who come up with those numbers? I'm not sure, but I read it and I like it. So remember that, communicate in person. 
Guys, I hope this helps as you start taking your lead inquiries and you say, I've got a stranger and I've got to build them up from rapport to value to trust to close. You've got 10 things you can keep in mind when you get that appointment and go in with confidence, be the expert, ask questions, listen, come from contribution, help them achieve their goals, the end in mind, seek agreement along the way, respond quickly to their inquiries, to their needs, to their appointments, speed to lead. Nothing else really should take precedence in terms of business other than getting that appointment, getting that table, and getting that agreement. And of course, when possible, do it in person. You will have a higher closing rate when you're face-to-face -face with somebody. National Association of Realtors tells us that the buyers and sellers will hire 60 to 70% of people who they meet first. So if you're there first, the odds of you working with that client uh, go dramatically up. So get in front of them in person. And I hope this helps as you look at that. If you want to take a look, we'll have another video right after this talking about some uh, continued ways of some common questions that buyers and sellers ask and how you can overcome those as you work in this conversion. Thanks for listening. My name is Rick Bosley with 3L Coaching and the Bosley team, Real Estate Solutions out of Orlando, Florida. And if I can ever help you in buying, selling, investing, referring, or just coaching you to be a better, more skilled agent, please reach out and uh, like and follow this stuff. If you like what you heard today, love for you to be a fan. Take care. Bye-bye.